Hey everybody, I've had a couple requests to go over how my brewing system works, so here we go. My brewing system is an electric rim system. Rim stands for Recirculating Infusion Mash System. It's essentially just uh, an advanced brewing system that uses a pump and a heating element, in my case electric, to maintain a stable mash temperature while brewing. This method turns your grain bed into a filter, which also makes your beer more clear. The brewing system is made up of two pots. The bottom pot is the brew kettle and the top pot is the mash tun. You start off by adding all the water you're going to use in the entire brewing process. For this recipe I needed 8.5 gallons of water so I went ahead and added all of that to my brew kettle and then brought it up to temperature. In this case it was about 152 degrees. Once your water is up to temperature you want to get your collar and set that on the top. For this brew system where the brew kettle and the mash tun are two different sizes, it lets you set them on top of each other. This is the drain tube that connects to the mash tun and drains into the boil kettle. This drain tube is really important because it allows the mash tun to drain into the boil kettle where the pump picks it up and recirculates it back into the mash tun. Now that that's connected, we need to connect our sparge arm. This is pretty much just a fancy toilet bowl float that allows the liquid to start and stop depending on how full the mash tun is. We connect one hose from the bottom of the brew kettle to the inlet of the pump, and then one hose from the top of the mash tun to the outlet of the pump. This creates a circle. We open up both valves to make sure everything will drain properly, and then start up the pump. Or in this case, you'll realize that most of the time your pump will work, but sometimes it gets stuck. So you have to go take it apart and fiddle with it for 15 minutes and then come back. Notice the screwdriver that magically appeared. So once you get your pump finally working, you create a loop. This loop pumps water from the boil kettle, through the pump, through the hoses, into the mash tun, which drains back into the boil kettle. Once you're confident that all your brewing salts are dissolved, you want to pump a good amount of water into the mash tun and then stop the pump. You want to close the valve to the mash tun so no more liquid comes out of it. Once you've pumped enough liquid into the mash tun that it will hold your grain, you want to go ahead and turn off your pump and heat and then close the other valve to the brew kettle. With the pump and the heat turned off, you're free to add your grain. I use this really big whisk because it does a great job of eliminating dough balls. This is where the system can get a little fiddly. Once you've poured all your grain into the mash tun or doughed in, you can go ahead and open the valve to the mash tun as well as the valve to the brew kettle. Turn on your pump so the liquid starts to recirculate again. If you look at the sight glasses on both pots, you can see that they're starting to equalize. Your job now is to make sure that you don't have less than four gallons in the bottom pot, which is kind of the danger zone for the electric coil. And also you don't want the water to go below the grain bed in the mash tun. You want a nice two or three inches at least above your grain. Once you get that dialed in, you'll have a nice recirculation of liquid. So now we mash for the next 60 minutes. For this specific system, it's nice to get a spoon and move the top third of the grain bed around every 15 minutes. This reduces channeling and also makes sure that all the grain gets evenly converted. You can see here that even after 15 minutes, the wart is much clearer than when we started. This is because the grain bed is acting like a filter. After mashing for 60 minutes, we go ahead and raise the temperature to 170 degrees. This is called a mash out. Once your mash out step is done, you want to go ahead and turn off the pump and close both valves. Use hand protection here because everything that that liquid has been touching is super hot. You'll see I have a glove on here. This is where we swap out the rubber o-rings. You want to install the smaller one so the liquid from the mash tun drains slower into the brew kettle. This is to keep your grain bed from collapsing and preventing the liquid from flowing into the brew kettle. Until now we had our temperature probe attached to our pump. This let us know the correct temperature for all the liquid that was flowing through the system. Now we want to remove that temperature probe and plug it into the side of the pot. 
I'm turning on the heat now so that by the time the mash tun drains, the liquid in the brew pot will already be close to boiling. This saves a good amount of time. Now you can safely remove your hoses and remove the mash tun itself from the top, along with the collar. After this, it's just like brewing with any pot. You add your hops, you cool it down, you make sure everything's good, and then that's the end of your brew day. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know.